the door insulation one. We're gonna do the rear door because that's where we're at right now. We already did the front. Uh, you can see here that's pretty much self-explanatory. There's no uh, with the D you can see here it goes any direction really wherever you can find. So it's pretty much the same kind of knob. But what these ones is is actually very specific, just like our uh, trunk sealant right here. The P leg, I guess you could call that. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, right, we till the wobbling stops here. All right, there we go. Well, the little P leg here, you can see here is facing uh, pretty much outside, facing out, uh, facing out where, oh wow, it's already dusty here already, wow. Amazing, wow, pretty good catch some dust. Okay, so you can see here the P right here. Normally, what you would do is you actually, when you make it here, you would normally cut, see that little slit here? You would normally cut a little hole right here, right, for the water to actually drain in because you're covering it. But what this one is, I guess they figure out a little bit better. And the material on this one does feel like a little bit more solider. So I really probably would recommend this, guys. Uh, you'll see in my item description below, it's going to be under, I believe it's under a seal. Uh, it could be under door seal, but it also does the front and the trunk. Anything with a door, I guess. I guess you can consider, consider it all a seal. Okay, so you will do this normally where you will face this outward. Just like we did that other one. Now, it comes with two pieces. So this right here says small P. And this is where we're working at right now. This one says big P. And then again, it's holding two packs here. I believe each each pack holds two sets. So these are mainly for the front door. The front door is going to have two pieces. It's going to have a different, it's more like a perfectly round. And then one that's actually like a P again. So yeah, I guess they call it a D. There we go. That's what the big D stands for because it's like a D shape, just like the hood, right? Like you got your big D. So this is pretty much, they're going to give you almost the same hood material, I believe. Uh, but it's just mainly for your side of your front door only but this one's going to be all around p which is kind of neat now there's going to be two pieces in each pack that you'll get so don't think that you have to cut it yourself they're already pretty much pre-cut as much as they can i'm not sure how even they are let's find out here's the second one and let's take it and just kind of hold it up if i if i'm tall enough anyway oh there we go so let's see here yeah, they look pretty yeah they look pretty much the same length you can see here i'm holding it kind of sort of flush here so they're pretty much the same length so start with either one of them just make sure you face a certain direction and we'll bring our instruction with us oh what am i doing i got the hood <laughs> i was gonna try to reach over there on the ground <laughs> wasn't thinking okay so we want to make sure we clean this area here as well so we're probably going to loop around here right there we're gonna have to come in there get it covered and then we're gonna go further down so that means this P right here it's gonna be positioned in the way get one of these guys out so you're gonna be facing the P you can do it anything you want but definitely don't do it this way you can see here a lot of people go in this way you're not supposed to do it that way that's what it says on the structure anyway you want the P facing out way so you start the other end then so you want the P facing out this way. So that, you want this to create a loop. So what I'm gonna do, if I'm thinking, I'm, 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 I'm thinking right, I don't wanna start like this. I might wanna, like I said again, my idea is to go over my PPF film as well. So that gives it a little extra screw. So I'm gonna flush, since the P is going out this way, I'm gonna have to have it. It's gonna be showing a little bit mine, but that's okay. You can do it any way you want to. And it'll still close just nicely. So I'm going to put mine like this right here. See that? So it rubs and flushes this perfectly. This is probably what I want. So I'm going to start the process, peel it off, and just kind of re keep working it. All the curvature around the area. Again, my idea is to get it to wrap around purely and nicely like this. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to peel off the tape. Well, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and prepare to clean this both um, I can clean the front and the the, the front door and so far one because I'm on this side anyway I'll go ahead and prepare to clean it now with my you know I have three left I believe uh, yeah three left so I'm gonna use one to clean both sides of the door the front door and this hinge right will go then the third one I believe it might be for some extra here and there so all right so this is it I will go and get started on that and I'll come back and record it so that way you guys can see the results.
So you can see here how I pretty much started it almost at the very tip. You can see there. Got that on there, the very, very, very tip. And then I worked my way along the edges. Almost kind of get an idea. There you go. What are you trying to do? Ruin my video? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. It's a Q and A. What is it? <laughs> yeah, I'll take it right now. Go for it. <laughs> anyway, my neighbors give me a hard time. I'm giving them a hard time. Uh, so there it goes. We got to push this under here. And if you look at, it, I'm almost 99% done already. So I just need to cut it. You can see in the very bottom here it looks really nice. Very clean there. Oh, that thing is the noisiest wheat whacker I ever heard. See that? Very nice and flush. Now, there's not much PPF in this corner, so it is a concern for me. I'm hoping that I won't rub it. And if it does, hopefully it'll flex inward like this. You can see where it probably would flex. So I'm going to get ready to cut it. You can see here's a little bit of PPF kind of lifting a little bit. Right there. So, because there's not much support right there, so... I want to make sure if I can grab it. Just peel it off a little bit like this. Try to bring it to the edge as possible. And there you go. If I can get a little bit of that PPF on here and just rub it forward, it will help a lot. So there it is. Looks like a ribbon contest right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just cut it. And that should be completing the rear door, and I'll do the other side as well. And that will I'll give you a final inspection on this. You guys can see here, it's sealed really well. I just didn't like to care for the crease mark right here where it lifts up the little rubber a little bit. But you can see here, everything is pretty much covered like it wasn't before. And that's really what you want. You want it to fully cover. It's harder to close. You can see here I gap it. This is a really good seal. I mean, it goes all the way curvature around, just like it did with the trunk. That way the it crease and everything won't get in the dust, but you're gonna have an airtight cabin. Um, that's for sure, because the reason why is, if you look how it seals before it even closes, you can see the lining already protruding out here, which is gonna great. It's gonna create a really nice effect. I already cut it there. See my cuts right there. Very clean cut, kind of slants it just slightly a little bit, but not above, you know, and then it's pressed in, make sure you press it all the way. This thing here is horribly lifting. It's getting caught in this little seal here. That's okay, I'll just get like a tape or something and tape it down, but I really like the seal. Now you're gonna have to close it a little harder because a little sissy close ain't gonna do it. See that? Look at that. That's not gonna do it. So uh, my passenger has a habit of actually closing too hard anyway, so they can slam it hard as they want. And it just freaking doesn't make that little, like it's about to break the glass. Because this rubber here cushions the, the impact, which is perfect. But yeah, I'm really, I'm really pleased with this one. Look at that. It's sealed right in. And this is what a door, good door seal should be like. Where you can actually see the rubber doing its job. You can see that's pressing. It's pressing right there in all these gaps that are open. Every time you wash your car, you realize when you spray in, it goes right into the door seal. But I kid you not, I think at this... I wish they did this for the front as well. That would be awesome. But anyway, I'm going to get started on the other rear. And we're going to go from there, okay? So you can see here, it's closed. It should be closed. We can tell the door is actually prompting us if it's not closed securely. Let's find out. Let's see. Okay. So this only shows the driver door so far. Not the rear passenger that we did. So let's give this a close. There, there is no, no door warning messages. So that's really good. Okay. Oh man, this is a juicy apple right here, Fuji. <laughs> Sweet. Gotta get some fruit in my diet. Rare that I eat fruit actually. But next one we're gonna do is this one right here. I'm gonna have to take a peel off of this one. Let's see what this looks like actually. The reason why is I have to bring the rubber and come around here, like right here. It's not that bad, you can see just a little lift. I think by now you probably knows. 
probably trained already. In fact, I didn't even have to go that far out, but I did. Oh, look at that. I could have just done this, really. Just have a little wedge in the behind, behind the scene kind of deal. But I decided to just go and put it in there for a while. Clean that out, see? Nothing wrong with this area here. It's just that little lift right here in this corner. And we're going to peel this tape off and find out. How do I do? I don't want to peel anymore while I'm lifting, so I'm going to try to peel it downward. Again, from it. Okay. Kind of rub my finger on there. Got a grip. Oh wow, they did a great job. Still feel a little bump, but that's okay. The reason why it's because when we put that door sealed, it's the, you know, people have a habit of just gripping this side right here, right? And I didn't want to feel that finger lifting part. Now I don't even feel it anymore. It's gone. So yeah, it trained it pretty well, the tape. So let me go and peel the rest of it off. I'm gonna take some rubber, rubber alcohol and we're gonna clean this guy up as well. And then we're going to prepare it to have that really good door seal. Again, this door seal is under my description below. I recommend it. It did a great job just for this piece alone. It was smart enough to know that, you know, you can't really do the wiggly wobbly thing. This one is perfect. Don't get the one that goes like right here with a tube. It doesn't make any sense. It looks really nasty. And not only that though, it was a pain in the butt to clean it for one thing, but it didn't really cushion it. I didn't see any kind of effect, but with this, this one perfect strip right here where it blocks his wind flow, it did much more before than the other one did, so. Yep. Continue on. We're gonna clean this with some ibuprofen alcohol. Continue on the rub. Just kind of clean it thoroughly. I was able to only use one, actually. I thought I could, uh, luckily. Um, I'll have to use my backup spare, which I brought the containment here. Even though it's 50%, it's still ibuprofen alcohol. Just do what I can, just get a little rag and just wash it, a little clean rag, not oil. Or anything like that so let me go and finish this one up and then i'll get back with you guys see we're already finished with this one um i have to actually sort of guide it a little bit so that actually that little rubber crease will not stick out but you can see here if i just actually just slam it oh actually it trained already that was fast <laughs> i guess you just have to train it um now it actually goes in now you can see here it's nice and sealed very well done see that I guess you have to train it when you first. This is like folding your pants. You get the crease mark. And once it's been there quite a few times, it'll follow you. But you can see here what we did here. Wrapped it just a few. You can see that. Very nice. This was actually protruding out a little bit, but I guess I guess I trained it. Now I can just slam it. Uh, give it a good slam, which is good. Most of my family members don't know how to actually uh, close a door lightly. Everyone just slams. So now... It's a much more solid field. You can see here, watch. Look at that. Very nice and histy quiet. Not only that, it seals perfectly. You can see how much more compressed it is. Beautiful right there. All the way through, down and down. Water can't get into this, that's for sure, no more. So when I'm spraying water to wash the car, which is good timing, because we're gonna wash the car soon, but it's gonna be raining throughout this week anyway. You can see, well you can't see it, but there it goes. Now this must be the B pillar maybe. So there's probably gonna be something we're gonna do here in the middle section of the car between the two doors. So we'll find out. But you can see here it goes all the way to the end. Let's see if I can get an angle for you right there. You guys can see it. Lighten it up. See right there, it just kind of shies right there. But you can see here it, it holds the flap really well. Let me see if I can get a, a tiny resolution in there. Come on. Maybe I gotta clean up the camera. It's my help. By the way, my camera I'm using is not really a camera, it's just my iPhone. I mean, not my iPhone. It's my Galaxy Note 5. That's it, Primple. I record all my videos pretty much from this camera phone, from even my scooter video. It does a trick. Uh, nothing fancy. You can see here. I just use a tripod. Right there. So I'm holding it. So yeah, it was easily. I just trained it for less than a minute ago. 
and now it's actually guide itself through. Same thing I did with this one. I kind of trained it. I tucked it where I wanted it to go. But let's see it will fall again. So you give it a good slam. Yeah, look, it went in. It didn't know there's no more tucking it out. That was fast. I guess if you train it, you don't have to actually. I was thinking it even worse came in there, put a little dab of super glue and kind of hold that rubber together in that little corner there to help keep the crease. But you can see here it's really nice and sealed properly. So we're probably gonna do something with the A-frame shortly. Or so this is the rear one. Big D right here, just like the hood. And then P again. I think these are almost all the same, really. They pretty much just use everything the same. It's either a P or a D. So this guy right here was a P, as we know. But that was pretty smart of them. I really like the way they did it because it sealed really nicely. So let's go and look at one that we could do briefly. This is pillar A. Let's see what pillar A is all about. We already did the hood. This must be pillar A right here. So pillar A, this is in the front of the car. Again, this is going right here. And again, I'm not even sure if I want to remove it because I did a pretty darn good job already. You can see here, this is pillar A right here where it would have been. So I'm probably not worried about pillar A. This is already pillar A right here for me. It's actually, you can see the difference. Well, actually you can use almost the same. This one's the flatter kind. You can see here it's like a little flat strip. Uh, versus the D or the P model. So this is like a really flat one. They call this model Z. Now I know what they mean by the model is the type of the type of shape it is, like a, a Z shape. Yeah, you're right. It is like a Z shape. That's why they call it a Z. Look at it, it's like a thunderbolt, right? If you look at it, Z. See that right there? Like a zigzag shape. See that? So that's why they call it like that. Oh I see now. Okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it as a logistic. This is again is a Model Z and this is for the B pillar. Again, this B pillar looks like it's hanging out here in the lower section. So it's gonna cover the areas that we couldn't cover from this when the this one right here. So let me go ahead and get started on that one. That shouldn't be that hard. Again, this is a Z. So let's see what direction is telling us to do. Okay, there it goes. The adhesive side of course, and then it peels off. So that means, let me take it out. I'm almost out of my alcohol rub for the, well I actually am. I'm just going to use um, Scott's shop towel and with some alcohol, you know, a clean one. There we go, let's take one out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to lay this like right here. And just have it follow the groove. We're going to peel off our sticker now. And then just kind of like, see that? And just tuck it all the way in and further much as we can in there so this will create a nice seal from above in fact i might not even have to cut it i could probably go even higher look at that you know this won't even affect it because it's actually coming from here so we're just going to cover this side here this is excellent see that i can just go from back of this shouldn't even interfere really and just keep on scooting it over and then just lay it so i might even start perfectly right here where i can because I have to go above this, right? I don't think I can fit this in there. Probably can't. The reason why is this guy's already in there. You know, I can't really, you know what I mean? I can't take, so I have to go above him a little bit, which is fine, just a little bit off the ground. He'll still create the seal that we want. You know, this little fat guy's already blocking the little midway. Come over, wrap him much as I can, and then it's gonna go an inch up. I don't even have to cut it, I'll just use everything. So it's kind of neat. There we go. I'm not sure why they wouldn't give you the whole strip right, right here. Maybe they already realized there's another part right here most people have already. I don't know. Again, these were two different sets of kits that I got. But this one seemed to do a really nice job. So maybe if I have extra from Pillar A, I guess, because they're both the same Z type. I can probably bring it back over here and do it, the rest of these with this one. But we'll see. So it doesn't seem that hard. So the B Pillar... An A pillar. Oh wait, I do have it. What am I talking about? Again, I'm not using this for A pillar, right? So I can take this here and use as much as I can for here. Hopefully there's two pieces. This is perfect. I'll use this for my A pillar. If I can, bring it all the way up from here to here, here. I want to see, actually, let's see how long it stretches. That's a great idea. Well, I wasn't thinking. 
Again, they're pretty much the same. They call it Model Z because of the shape. Model D because it's brown. Model P because of the shape. It's all about the shape. So here it goes. See that? These are all Model Z shape. Let's see how much it gives me. Yeah, I'll use each one all up. And I'll bring it high as possible over here. You know? I think the more the merrier, right? Or how does it close? I wonder why this is the only one that probably, probably because the air kicks in like this and they just want to block this thing. But I'm thinking, you know, why not go high as possible? Get most of it out of the way, right? And that way you don't have to, you do have to put something on here as well. So let's see if that's going to interfere with what's on here as well because I believe this is going to have a rubber too. So there's going to be a double rubber actually. So I got to be really careful because this is going to put another fat D, this right here. It's going to lay it right here. This little thing is going to be a fat D. When it comes around, if you notice here, see this? It smashes it already into this other D. This is a D also. So I'm going to have a double D. <laughs> double D. That sounds like some kind of porno. Okay, so it's going to smash. This D is going to smash into this little D. So we got double D. So we'll find out if that's going to be excessive or not. We'll do like a dry fit perhaps and see how it actually can close. You know, I mean, more the merrier, I figured, but definitely we'll put the whole thing up above here. Because over here, this already has a Z, so I'm not worried about it. That's the only reason why I can use this pillar A for most of pillar B right here. So this is it, Michael. I'm going to go and get this all set up. All I'm going to do is just basically, again, rinse it out with some alcohol rub, get all the oils and fingerprints off. Point of ray, I'll tell you exactly the questions. Uh, if you can get it right. Okay, when was my car born? Pretty much delivered, my delivery date, when I got it. I call it my, you know, it's birth date. And what's the name of my car? If you can get those two questions right and you're a subscriber to my channel, put that comment below and at the end I'll open up that package and show you what you'll be getting for free. The first one who comments when my car was actually delivered, when I got delivered, and then also when, uh, what's the name of my car? Those two questions. Just those two right here, you'll win the free gift inside, and which I will reveal to everyone uh, before probably the end of this video or somewhere in the section. You will see exactly what's in here if you don't know what gets in here. It's a $40 value, free sent to you. So it's a free gift for my subscribers who actually watch my video, who knows those two questions. When I got my car, when's the birth date of my car, and what's my car? What's the name of my car? Okay, great, thank you. I'll give you a hint, it's like a ghost. Okay, <laughs> that's actually Tesla Dave, that's his car name. You can see here, we were able to get the, it's supposed to be A pillar, but we got to put it on our B pillar. It's pretty much the Model Z, Type Z, I should say, not model, because I'm used to model cars. So I think it's only this much gap really left, but it was a little higher. The one they gave you only probably come to here. So we were able to take the model, I mean, okay, I'll say it, model uh, A pillar, pretty much to be able to put it in here. They should just say part A or something, part B, not put model because it's so confusing. Um, especially if it's a Tesla and it has model S, X, Y, 3. So anyway, so I was able to put that here, right here, so this is Z. Now what I could do is use the actual B pillar one, if I need it a little bit more and just cut excessive slack or enough that I need to fit further complete this if I wanted to. But I just don't like that little, it looked like it was a defect, you know? I don't like to have that little open cut mark. I'd rather have it gone like this, so. The other one should be pretty even. I'm glad that it actually laid on the, the black so it doesn't show too much. Now, as far as this one goes, we did the bottom run ready. So it's very self-explanatory, these pictures here. I mean, you can visualize it. You can see it right away. So that, it just tells you. It wants to go overlapping, the bottom overlaps pretty much. And then you have your side one, which is gonna be the model D. See that one? So it's gonna be a really, really cushion. Again, I'm not, I'm debating on whether putting that D or not, because if you look at it, this thing already has it. So I might not really do that well. And this thing's already covered this part already. So it looks like it's creating a nice, really sealed. So I might not even need to put, uh, D actually because the fact is this one's already have uh, right here on the mark. So 
a lot of things I could probably do different, but definitely I need to cut this slack off. You see, they give you a little bit, like like all of them, they give you like about maybe a good, you know, anywhere from an inch and a half to, to four inches of extra thing. And this is not pulling it, by the way. I'm not stretching it. I'm just gliding the material nice and slowly and letting it secure itself. If you can see here how it looks from underneath, that's how I had to do it pretty much. Get it from underneath the car. See there, the tip of my D, it's sitting flush like right there. It's dimping in a little bit, but it's perfectly all the way aligned. Not sure you can see it, but there it is. So I make sure of it, and then what you want to do is you want to give it a good some, you know, some good pressure after you know you got it to where you want it to to make sure you smash it all the way in so that adhesive can actually pretty much stick, especially in the areas where it's going to need to to drain so every time it gets rain and you got water coming into your windshield this is how it escapes through these little passages right here so sometimes you can cut a hole here and have it dropped all the way down but since it's gonna land on this I got a feeling it's probably gonna create a little puddle in here until we actually wipe it off so you could actually cut a little slit here for it to go further down in straight but then again, I think it might defeat the whole purpose of isolating the sound. Just to have not any kind of water escaping. So if you cut a little hole here, it's just going to... Probably air pocket is going to go back in here. So it defeats the whole purpose. So I'm not going to cut it. That's just my preference. But you could, if you want to, cut a little hole here. Another hole it in. So it can actually drain itself. But since this is sealed on my end here. I don't think I have to worry. It's just going to go ahead and... Um, I can just take a towel and wipe it off. So it's just, it's gonna be blocked off when it's closed. And I think it's gonna travel, so it's gonna just roll right out, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't think it'll puddle in here. But we'll see. We'll test out when it's raining to see. So I'm gonna cut this in here real quick. And then you can see me close it and see how it actually seals. So far, this is fantastic. You can see the crease mark. You can see it already shows a little bit right here. But for the most part, we can train it a little bit further to pull it out neatly. See that? It's gonna be after a while, it's gonna wear in and it's gonna be easier to close, but right now it's very stiff because this thing's still pretty much tough and it's brand new. So let's go ahead. There you go, see that? Now I can actually just give it a good slam and it's fine. It sounds really nice, more solid, more secure. Kind of be, in fact, we can close this right now and see how it looks like, ready? Make sure nothing else is in a hinge. Now I might want to trim this little corner a little bit. As you can see here when I'm folding it in like this, it's already starting to fold on itself. Or I can train it, like push it this way ahead of time. And that way it always will ride this way. I think this will probably be good. Okay, let's give it a slam. Very nice. See that right there? It's already sealed. Wow. Yeah, it's already sealed. I'm not sure that... That D is going to do us anymore. Look at this guy right here. He was supposed to come the other way. Oh yeah, he is supposed to come this way. Yeah. Because he's going this way horizontal. I forgot. He's not coming downward. But yeah, you can see there. Create seal for... Oh, this is why they put... See, this is why they gave you just a B pillar right here. Because this is where mainly it blocks. But mine goes all the way in as well as high as all the way up here. So it's perfect. Yeah, I'm not sure that D is going to do us anymore. I mean, I could put it on there. I'll probably create it even much more sealed. Um, that way it actually touches rubber to rubber. But I got a feeling this is probably plenty, really. But let's try it. I mean, we might as well. I hate to do it, but you know what? If it helps also secure my PPF and the edges right here, I guess it'll be a good thing, right? So it's going to be a win-win. So let me go and cut this out cleanly. And we'll start on that D part. Uh, Model D trimming. So let's see here. I want to cut it in a way where it's a clean cut. So I bought the bigger scissor. This will be a much cleaner cut. Okay. Let's see here. Cut straight. You might want to press on it to see where it's actually really resting. And then you might want to flex it inward like this. That way when you're cutting it, it's going to be a really clean cut. 
So this is it. I just give it a good one, two, three. Oh. There you go. See that? Nicely cut. Kind of come, came in a little bit like this right here. Could have gone the other way, but that's okay. It's just will work. All right, so let's close it. That you can't even see it. Nice, very nice. So there we go. That creates a seal. You're not gonna have any wind. It's a little bit right here. The markings. You can see a little gap, but it's pretty much sealed from the cabin inside, I believe. It's insulated. So this is great. I might be able to could have trimmed this out like this and maybe come in but I'm gonna leave this alone I kind of like that little little extra slant here it's coming outward this way just in case I need a little bit more you can see here's more kind of curvature got a little extra coming out this way slanted like this so that's fine with me so as long as the adhesive is not exposed we should be good okay now the final test is to see that corner there see once we tuck it in it stays in so that's a good thing for it to do it stays flexed toward the op this direction, which is what we want it. All right. Let me debate on putting that D. Let me go and do the rest on the other side, the one that's critical. And again, we might put that, that D here or not. We'll see. Um, you know what? Let's just do it. The reason why is I have it already here, ready to go. So this is it. This is the Model D. I already cleaned it already, by the way. So what I do is I save these guys here just in case I ever need it. Or something you can see here, got a little bit of piece of that still left. Wasn't as clean as I wanted to, but trimmed it out. As clean as I wanted to. Trimmed it out a little bit right there. But it's not bad at all. So we'll save this for the next uh, errand run. So we're almost done completely off of this side. We had a head start because we already had this already in there. And this is probably the more trickier one in there to get into between like that and just kind of feel your way around it. But I think I was able to do it. So that one's okay. Nice. Okay. So we're gonna put this D mainly the purpose is to keep our PPF pretty much corners there from not actually flexing out. So I think this D would serve a good purpose for that. So let's go and open this guy up. I think this car is going to sound very quiet once we take it for a spin on the freeway as well as uh, just regular street driving because the way it's sealed now. Super, super uh, good. Okay, so here we go. What we want to do. I think this is a great way to maybe we can start from the very bottom here and work our way up. doesn't really matter. This D is pretty much identical to which side. So we can start from the bottom, like this. Go through all the edges like we did with the hood. Pretty much it's gonna be the same math method to the madness. So let me go and set this over here. You guys can see me start. It's already been cleaned by alcohol. Uh, I throw over alcohol, so I wanna start right here, jam it. In fact, I might want to even push some pressure on here, create some extra, and that way it jams it right there. This is probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to start from, I guess I'll start from this end. The reason why is that way I can create a clean cut from the very top. Much easier to cut from the top than lower yourself in the bottom. Okay, so there it goes. I peeled it off. You know, just pretty much simply, you know, try to do it one time pass. Don't try to adjust it so much. You know, you know, as I'm smacking it in, give it a little push down. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my thumb and I'm going to guide it. That's it. I'm going to push it out. I'm going to sort of flex this outward. If you notice, I'm pushing down and giving it all the slack that it needs. I'm not stretching it. While I was doing that, I'm going to use my finger. There we go. Just kind of feel it. I want to push it outward. Coming up to this corner here. 
might be the tricky one. This is not that hard to do, actually. It's probably a medium level skill. I mean, if you really want to do a good job, it's minimum, medium, but you could probably do this with basic. But just make sure you clean that surface really good. If you, this is right here, the corner where you want not to lift, give it some more slack if you can. Just push it in a little bit, compact it. So that way it'll have all the plenty of slack at once. There you go, nice and flush. Yeah, and don't press on it yet. Do it in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way up. Let's see if you can see this way better. Maybe this one, you can see it from this side, but probably better off this side. Okay. Try to just peel a feet at a time, work at it. Nope. In my situation, I'm only putting it on because I want it to protect the PPF uh, edges from not lifting as well. So this is actually serves a dual purpose for me. Okay, what I'm going to do is take my finger. Again, if you notice here, I'm not tugging it. I'm just kind of letting the finger guide it. It wants to go outward, which is perfect, and I'm flexing it inward, which is good. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Almost there. Take your time. It might take you an hour a door, but you're going to get a great job out of it. I can definitely just rush this, but you only got to do this once for a long, long time. This seal should last you pretty much multiple usage. Not multiple usage, but it's going to last you a while. Probably last as long as the PPF film. PPF film is good for 10 years warranty. Peels yellow, lift. But since it's so minor here, lift like this, I don't want to take it all the way through the shop. I can do it myself. Just kind of repair a little bit here and there. Which we did a great job. It's already been done. All right. In the corners there, give it a good pinch. I'm not sure you can see it. There it goes, getting there. Again, I'm getting it close to the edge because I also want to get part of the PPF half of it on there. The ideal is to get P half of the PPF on there and half of it on just the regular surface of the paint to stick the clear coat or if it is clear coat still in there. Nice. We're coming up to the edge. I can pre-cut it right now to estimate where I need to land or I can just keep going all the way as possible. So I chose just to go all the way as possible. There we go. Nice. See, that's it. That's pretty much. And then just go back and forth on this and just kind of give it a good pinch. <laughs> I'm pinching it because if you rub it, it's not going to be able to rub. It's a big, huge, fat D hollow. So you, all you can do is just pinch it. Give it a good thumb pinch all the way through. back we can test out right now let's see how it seals okay so this is what we got so far you can see here along the line you can see here the crease see that perfectly see how it bunches up like this this is why I didn't want to do the hood like because it uses a D one and it curves around like this but the hood one's even more crazier because it's more of like a 90 degree bent this is lightly like more than 10 degree bent it's a very not that sharp of a bent. So this is why you could probably get away with a D one, but I wouldn't do the hood one like this to wrap it all. I mean, I wouldn't do the the frunk like this because they the other places they'll give you a whole one like this. And again, it's for the frunk. And I tried it, that thing didn't work for nothing. I even did it, I even cut a little slip mark so I'll be able to cover it. And it, it did not cover this entirely well at all. And it gave it to go around like this. I just don't really see it really productive. 
So I'm kind of really happy with what they got here. You can see it looks really nice so far. It's now looking like a door seal for sure. I had some practice from the first one, by the way. So whatever I can share with you guys and you guys can do it a little bit better. Great. You guys can make comments there how I can do better. I'm more than happy to listen to. So here we go. Put that on there like this. Now it's just, this has some extra, you know, you could even go as, as far as up to here like this quarter. Look. See that? Since this has some extra, you can even take it if you really want to get creative. Go as high as this corner all the way up like this, you know. There you go. You can go all the way as high as this one right here. I'm not sure why would you do that. It will definitely seal right here. This is where it's going to land on. Right here when it binges it. In fact, let's test it out. Okay, you ready? Ooh. <laughs> we smacked it all right. Oh, man. Something's, something's weird. It didn't even lock, did it? Let's see this. Let's get this out of the way, shall we? Let's see if it actually will close. Just kind of do a first test. Okay, you can see here it's really smashed. Super smashed. The reason why is, that's what I was afraid of. This might be overkill from this guy right here. Or we could do as a favor and just take this whole thing off. You know what I mean? Because I think this D is so much better. Because this actually fits this hole and hugs this whole door. Where this one stops short here and it stops short here. So I think we might just remove this entire one completely off. And um, we'll see. I think I kind of grew up on this D right here. You can see here the cut marks are already made for us. Alright, so let's do this. Yeah. Okay, so this is primary. We're going to cut it off right there. So let's take our scissors. There we go. Perfect. Perfect as far as the adhesive goes. Where the adhesive is going to go. Alright, let's see if we can give it a close again. And since we have this extra, what, five, five inches of extra. See that? It's not going to want to close. Right, because of that extra, the D part it wasn't expecting. So if we were to peel this off, here we go. This is coming off. Ugh, I already ripped it, so that's pretty much it. It's easy to rip it, by the way. All right. So what this D is going to do is going to press it straight in this little pathway. I was trying, wondering where the PPF film was. Now I know it's right uh, between that D. Oh man, this thing is, it's not going to be fun ripping it, that's for sure. There we go. Alright, so there we go. A little messy. I think my P a door PPF stops around this area right here. So we're going to take this eye off. Only reason why, because I think I believe that D is going to seal much better than this guy right here on the door. We're going to clean them really well. We'll just get some alcohol rub and clean him thoroughly. I don't want to put... Um, goo gone because it's so close to my PPF. I don't want any of that that goo gone stuff to sip in or else it's going to create some problem for me with the PPF lift. So we're just going to... Okay, so now this is off. Let's give it a close just momentarily. It looks so naked without it actually. <laughs> but that's okay. This thing is supposed to do a much better job, right? Nice. There we go. Oh wow, look. Sealed all the way. This is definitely a great door seal. Look at that squeezes it perfectly right around the edge there you can see there and then right here it's blocked by the second level of the I'm not sure you can really see it I can't even see it 
let me lighten it see that it's in and it's blocked by the second level layer underneath as well so it creates a really nice seal oh this is definitely awesome oh what's this here a little mark no oh, just good it's just dirt Whew. yeah i know every little specks in my car nice so this is good look at that it sounds so much better you know it sounds more solid heavy it sounds like you're, you're it sounds like you're opening a refrigerator watch crack open a refrigerator like phew. you know this is awesome okay i better stop it <laughs> yeah so that's it so i'm gonna do the same thing to the other door all right but before i do that it's time to unveil what you guys will get if you guys can answer those two questions that i asked you guys earlier in this video i'm not gonna repeat it again because i want to see if you guys paid attention to the beginning the middle and hopefully the end so and this is not the end yet but we'll find out right now okay so whoever gets the two answers uh correct and they subscribe to my channel uh if they need it for their 18 inch uh wheels it works in all tesla wheels you guys probably know what it is dum, 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 drum roll please here we go i'm going to ship this out to you guys courtesy of ncy store it's a free giveaway there it is it's beautiful never been used we did try it on just to try it on but it's never been used. I think we only opened the first one just to lay it out and see what's in there. But it's beautifully, so it's a 40 something dollar value, 43 perhaps, off of Amazon. If you guys want it, it's free. Just the first subscriber, or not the first subscriber, the, the subscriber who can comment uh, the two questions I asked previously in this video. So check that out, okay? If you guys want this, you're gonna get a four piece set. It replaces your aero wheels right here. And you're gonna be able to put that on there. Either your, as long as it's 18 inch, I believe you'll have that spacing for it. I believe it could work for all other sizes too. I think they're all the same, right? I don't think these lug nuts are ever gonna change or move. So, but as far as I know, I think they're only for 18 inch, but I could be wrong. They could be for any wheel that you want, as long as there's gonna be availability of five lugs and the center cap. And be able to so it's yours free including shipping i'm gonna mail it to you as long as you comment the two questions i asked previously you're gonna get this shipped to you free of charge the first one that makes the correct comment and um subscribe i can see here the door sill sounds so much more luxury it sounds like it's worth a forty-five thousand dollar car now you can see it looks really nice too beautiful uh it looks straight in it curves kind of push it in like this with a little bit here on the side and one thing I did wish I did was I actually should have pulled this one a little bit further from here and then cut it myself right here on this side at this end. So if you guys do the rear one, uh, just go ahead and uh, feed it from here, extend it. I'll get a tape here to keep this guy trained or something for a little bit. I can't use actually painter's tape because it won't stick to vinyl. So I'll have to use a clear tape the best I can do. Um, but I wish I did was actually extend this a little bit further outward like this and then just cut it on the other side. When you actually close it, you'll have enough slack here you can see. You can pull it from this side and just snap it right here much more better but this one's good this one's a little bit concerning seems like a little bit peeling off but i don't think so i think it's just maybe a stretch mark or something so i'm forcing it back into his own little space here should be fine there we go i cleaned this with some um, goo gone you can't really rub the sucker off it just leaves a little black streak and you can do it all day long you want that it's just that little goo gone that just like just take it off like butter, but just want to make sure you trace it back with some alcohol, especially if you have PPF. You don't want the goo gone to evaporate and start going into your PPF. Just a little cautionary note. But you can see here, it looks really nice. All the way down. Same with this one here. The floor. And you want to flex it this way. So when it actually gives a closure, you can see here how it closes. It wraps around, you can see there? So it starts wrapping around. See that it creates like a C cup so that means it's gonna take a really nice seal too when you squirt water on it you know especially when we're gonna do a car wash you can see your little little tar tire broke on the road and it hit my PPF so that's fine it should come off with water put some water right now for it looks brutal doesn't it 
it's almost like a refrigerator. Probably one of the best door seals I've seen in the market already. See here, really nice sealed all the way through. It creates a little C cup section here. Wasn't sure if you guys saw that yet, but I'll take a picture of it again or a video of it. And eventually you guys are gonna be able to close it normally like it would. But you guys can see here, very nice sealed all the way through. The curvature and everything like that. Don't cheat yourself by stretching it in this corner here. Make sure you actually flex it down so it actually has pressure for it to actually create the crease naturally on its own without you actually forcing it to go around the curvature. And what's great about it, so that's gonna take some time. So you might have to guide it for a little bit and then eventually it'll break in. It's just gonna take a little time because it's a brand new seal. And this is really what makes it seal. You guys can see that. Very, very good. The rubber is just on top of each other. It's almost like a double layer rubber. So I don't think if you squirt water this way, that way, or any way inside the little green, you know, open gap, you're not gonna have a whole bunch of water anymore. I don't think this is gonna actually, you know, especially in it rains or something like that. Well, one thing, the mud flap will protect it. So I really can tell you from a standpoint of must have accessories, this is it pretty much. You wanna get the alloy gator, protect your rim right away from rim rash. I see so many people with nice rims and all of a sudden it's all scraped up. Let's go and test this out and see how actually it sounds. Okay, so far getting in. Whispering quiet. Turn fan 10. Command understood. Set fan 10. All right, so here we go. Let me go and get my card. It's kind of nice to be able to use my card here. There we go. Text it. Go and get this guy out of the way. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take a test drive. I only have a few minutes to record left. So I just wanna be able to share this with you. What it's like to be able to drive this. Okay, really? Set fan 10. Set AC 60. There we go, that's full of power. Fan setting. Nice. Okay. So here's the noise. Well, that's with the fan on, okay? Fan off. Fan off. Okay, here's the noise without it. You can see pretty much how quiet it is. People are still walking here with the coronavirus incidents going on. So we're going about 39, you can see the speed gauge there. I don't know a significant amount of difference yet, but I think when we got on the freeway, we might. So here we go. Here. I'm just kind of enjoy the drive sometimes, be able to take control of the wheels. Very nice. So it's 43. Here we're going to check to see how it does on the freeway. We have about a few minutes here to really test it out. So we're getting ready to launch onto the freeway here, coming up on the ramp. Our tire pressure has increased, some of them to 44 from 43. Uh, we didn't feel any air or nothing like that. It's just, a, it's just the way it is, I guess. You'll start seeing the tire pressure. Here it goes, we're launching onto the freeway. I'll put this on auto drive to help me, just to make sure. Okay, this is going 50. It's gonna get up to speed at 65. Oh, to the ramp. There we go. Now I'm pushing at 70, 80. There 
go. 80 is the maximum. We're following this car right in front of us, the truck. Okay. I think I'm noticing now the quietness now. Before I did not. See the car is automatically slowing down. I'm not even tapping my brakes. Whew. Very nice. Okay, so we're lowering speed right now. We're going 55 miles right now on the freeway. Other than the air conditioner. Fan off. It's has an improvement on the freeway much more noticeable other than just protecting your car from getting moisture and dust and debris coming into the cabin i think it does a pretty good job i think this uh, door still did a really good job on the freeway you'll start noticing it pretty much when you do it about maybe 55 miles an hour driving so Yeah, about 55, you, you 